field boundary or left leg? Um, I like to try to play on both, especially this early. I try to cross train so guys can play the field and the boundary, and then we let it shake out as it may, depending on the opponent that we play against. So speak to your relationship with Christian and just the important, like that and that level of importance and, and what he brings to his team. Oh well, he is big time because he's able to uh, be a big brother to the rest of the guys on the on the in the squad. As far as that, his uh, good cop, bad cop type of thing. He can uh, he could be the good cop and I'm the bad cop because he's been with me for two years, so he knows my moods, he knows how I go and how I teach, and he's able to kind of, you know, in incorporate that with the other guys. He led the Pac-12 attackers for loss in the corner position. Mm -hmm. with what you guys are trying to do with simulated pressure, how important is that from a true corner, not from a nickel? Well, um, it's very important to shoot for corner period, being able to tackle, you know what I'm saying? So he has a knack for um, diagnosing plays that are happening behind the ball, because a lot of those things wasn't his tackles for losses weren't always pressures. They weren't always corner pressures. It was just things as such where we were up defenders and he had the opportunity to pull the trigger and he did. So what have you seen from Jaleel so far these first few days? You saw him taking reps with the twos. Last, uh, last uh, he's year. doing good. He's he, he's he's definitely going to help us. Uh, he's going to be strengthening the depth definitely. Um, just trying to get a little bit more out of him as far as catch him up mentally and technically. He's a little bit behind on that as he should be. Shoot, he should be getting ready to go to his ground here pretty soon. So. <laughs> But he's here and he's working and he, he's going to be right come fall camp. How do you like, what do you want your corners to, to be known for? What are you looking for your guys to, to be on the field? Oh, obviously toughness first and foremost. Uh, guys that can tackle and then obviously guys that can cover. If you can't cover it, then you're probably not playing that position in the first place. But, you know, I love for my guys to be known for toughness, um, you know, tenacity, short memories, and guys that get after it. And then uh, you have, you have Manny and you have William, you have Bridges. A lot of guys have probably played. Oh, that's exactly what you want, you know what I'm saying? So just God be able to plug and play anywhere, you know, as of right now, because of the new terminology and the new scheme and the new technique, this kind of guys are just solely learning, like you said, field and boundary corner right now. They're just learning that, and then we'll progress into guys playing the star position, or maybe playing boundary or free safety or stuff like that. So. With Bennett, he got so much praise last year for just being a really high IQ, high IQ football player. How have you seen that kind of display itself, and what's it like for him? Well, one of the first things that start off like that when it shows is his communication skills. So. Uh, his high FBI shows up a lot because he's very communicative out there on the field, you know what I'm saying? So he comforts the younger guys when he's out there by reassuring what coverage and what technique they're in. So that's always a blessing to have, especially in back of you as a corner. And you got your safety barking at you. Well, in college and pro, so many times, that team, you can see the corner not turning his head, look for the ball, mm -hmm. or he would have had an interception. Mm -hmm. like that. How do, you, how do you teach that? How do you teach that? What the fine line between when you do? That's always a, a, a every every job I go to. That's always a big big subject. Um, it, it depends on the coverage. It depends on your position at that point in time of the play. If you're in phase, out of phase, that all that stuff matters in whether you look for the ball, which a lot of people, I would say, armchair quarterbacks might not understand. So it's it's a certain time when you can look up for the ball, and it's a certain time when you should. Well, so, receiver's eyes are getting big. You look for the ball. <laughs> Depends on if you're a face. <laughs> if, you, if you're looking at the receiver's eyes, looking back through, that must mean you're probably in chase mode. Yeah. A lot of the time. So if you're in chase mode, you might want to catch up first before you look back. Because all you're going to do is watch the ball get caught. <laughs> having, <laughs> <it's on> <laughs> <point>. <laughs> having been to uh, yeah. six different Pac-12 programs, obviously, you know, you've heard a lot of Oregon, you know, as, as a competing team. Yes, a place like Colorado is not exactly a place like Oregon. Uh, yeah. How... How does what you've experienced here different or similar to what you knew about Oregon as a program hearing it from the outside? Well, coming here, obviously, I played here a lot as an opponent. So, you know, you love that, uh, the atmosphere in the stadium and how rowdy the crowd gets and all that kind of stuff. You just love that part of it. So to be able to be a part of it was great. Um, this is a college town. Awesome. You know, um, I went to a college town school when I went to college. So coming here, just kind of reenacting that type of thing is it's awesome for, you know, especially from a kid from Los Angeles, California, you know, Pasadena, California, to be exact. It's a great place to come in and, and get, your, get your college experience in. Looking down the road a little bit, I'm not sure how much you can answer this question or not because of the recruit, but your son, how much fun has it been to watch him go through the recruiting process and the process uh, of in terms of coaching in the future? It, I mean, it, it's been good. You know, um, it, it's, it, it, it's helped me become a better coach and a better recruiter.
how, how big is it to finally have the rec uh, recruiting resources available to you as opposed to having to try and compete against the machine? H-U-G-E. <laughs> <laughs> the prospects of coaching with established coaches like Dan Manning, Tosh Lefoy, Hey. How, I know that's got to be exciting as a coach. How has it lived up this past few weeks? Awesome. It's like trying to get your, your master's, you know, getting getting your doctorate in school. So, I mean, it's it's awesome being a guy around guys, young coaches that are energetic, very smart, um, know what they want, know how to get it done, know where all the snakes are within the scheme, that type of thing like that is, 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 is very comforting. Well, when the staff is, is – mostly this young relative to a lot of other you know power five staffs what is that communication different just between guys that are all of a similar age group versus having to be a you know one of the younger guys on the staff of 60 year olds or something yeah, like yeah. that well I, I guess it could be I, I you know I never look at it like that because I'm always a young guy even though I might be the oldest on this staff I'm always the young guy so that's how I like to think about it. <laughs> You're obviously a defensive coach, but a lot of that is trying to stop the offensive side of the ball. Yes, what have you seen from Kenny Dillingham so far that's kind of challenged you or helped you grow as a coach? Uh, he's very innovative. Uh, he's he's able to he's able to put his chess pieces in play and, and get those get those big pieces of the ball when he needs to get them. So moving guys around and uh, creating matchup issues is I see that that's that's a really high point for him, which is great.